Today in our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 1500, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the Curt True Track Weight Distribution System with complete sway control. Part number is C17500. Now the Curt True Track Weight Distribution System is going to use spring bars to brackets here to help distribute that weight that we're getting on this rear up through all the axles, the axles on our trailer and the two axles on our truck. Now what makes this kind of unique is we've eliminated the chains, so we're not gonna get that unwanted movement that we sometimes get out of our spring bars when they're connected with the chains to where they'll kind of move side to side. That's gonna help us with tracking, but also with the bracket system, it holds this rigid back here. So that, that movement's gone, it's eliminating some of that sway. Also here in the front, we've got the small ball detent. This is designed to sit into a pocket right here. Once you make a turn, or let's say we've got some sway happening, that's gonna fight back. That's gonna try to return back to its original location no matter which way it goes. So not only is the True Track a great weight distribution setup that we can really spread our weight out, but it's also taking care of that sway control. What that means is we don't have to have the ball hanging off the side of the hitch back to another ball that's welded onto the trailer. Um, we don't have to worry about the friction devices and things like that. So now the spring bars, as well as the head and our brackets all have a nice black powder coat finish to them. It's gonna make sure it stands up and looks good for a long time. Really easy maintenance with the system as well. On the back of each of our pivot points here, we're gonna have grease zerks so we can easily service those, make sure they stay lubricated. And really, it's a, it's a quiet system. Now we've got pre-drilled holes and spacer blocks that give us five different options for the amount of weight distribution that we need to be sent from our spring bars here back up to our truck. We've got it on position four now, so it's got an angle. Kind of where you see it there, the spring bars are loaded. If the lower our position settings, if we go to position one, our bars are gonna be up higher. Position two lowers them, three, four, and so on. And the more drop we have in those bars, the more transfer we have of energy back up to the truck. Now to help out in positioning them, we've got the tool that's provided. Simply place your spring bar on the side, the end in the bracket, and lever it into position. Now to begin our installation, we need to get a couple of measurements here to determine exactly how our setup needs to be. The first is gonna be from the ground to the top of our coupler here. It's about 25 inches, and now we'll take this measurement with our trailer level. Now we'll pick a location here on our bumper to use. We'll measure from the ground to that point. I'm using the inside of that step there. Looks like that's about 22 and a quarter inches. Now we'll also do it on our front bumper here. I'm gonna use the furthest out corner there and it looks like that's about 24 and 5 eighths. Now we can slide the shank into our hitch here. Just wanna secure it with the provided pin and clip. Now we're gonna take the shorter of our two bolts. That's gonna go through the bottom hole in our head assembly here. And we need to line this up so that the ball is one eighth of an inch higher than our coupler for every 100 pounds of tongue weight that we've got. So we've got about 800 pounds of tongue weight on this trailer. So I'm gonna set the ball about an inch higher than our coupler height. That should be good. That should have us at about 26 inches. Now I'm gonna slide in my other bolt. The other bolt on both sides is gonna have one of our spacers. This sets the pitch of our head, and we're gonna set that, the two tabs that stick out of the back. The top one's gonna to go in the front hole. The bottom one's gonna go in the middle hole. You'll see in the instructions, that's just our, just our initial setup phase there. We've got a lot of different positions there we can choose from to really maximize the potential of the system. Now we're gonna take the nylon lock bolts and run those down on. We wanna get these just snug enough to where they'll hold our spacers into position for us. Now we can take our spring bars. We're gonna slide those into the head, secure them with the provided clips. Now we'll go ahead and hook up our coupler to the ball. Now we're gonna lower this down just far enough to make our coupler's connection. Get that down into place there. 
And once that's locked in, we're gonna raise the vehicle up uh, about three inches in the rear. Now from the end of our spring bar, we're gonna measure forward about four inches and mark that center point. That's gonna mark the center line of our spring bar support brackets. Now we're gonna have three pieces to our bracket assembly here that are actually gonna go around the trailer and then we'll have one that's gonna slide up inside. What we're gonna do is take one of the narrower ones and have the channel facing us. We're gonna take the larger one and with the single holes both at the top, we're gonna to place those right over each other, just like that. We're gonna place that carriage bolt through, bring it over to the other side of the A-frame, and we'll place that carriage bolt back in, or place the nut back on the carriage bolt, rather. Now I'm gonna take quite a bit of the slack out of this bolt just so we don't have to do it when it's in closer to our tanks here. We're gonna bring that forward and we'll center it right over our mark, which you can see right through the middle of that hole. Now we wanna slide our bracket in here and get it matched as closely as we can to the bottom of our bar. So what we'll be using is, it's like our bottom hole there is gonna be the closest match. So let's go ahead and just pull the spring bar out of our way, slide this up inside, slide another carriage bolt through, place our nut on the back and we're gonna just tighten that down a little bit just like the other one. Then we can go ahead, snug them up and then torque them down to the specifications that we're gonna find in the instructions. We just wanna ensure as we do that that center line mark stays in the middle of that bracket. All right, now with this side properly installed, we'll head over and do the same thing on the passenger side. Now we're gonna pull out on our spring bar slightly, hook in the helper arm, and then just kinda work that up into position, just like that. And you put one of the retainers down in, then we'll secure it at the bottom with our clip, just like that. Now we'll head over, do the same thing for our passenger side. Now that we've got everything hooked up, we're gonna take the weight off of our jack, go ahead and lower this back down. This is gonna transfer that weight over our system. Then once we've got the weight off of there, check those measurements and see how we've done. We'll measure in here to the top of our coupler. Now it looks like we're gonna go ahead and raise this back up. We're gonna adjust our head down to a lower setting to give us more of a weight distribution effect because we still need to come up here a little bit at the rear of the vehicle. We're just gonna back out the top bolt on our setup here. And really just far enough so we can pull out those spacer blocks. And we can kind of lower this down a little bit, take some of that slack off, and allow us to reach those other settings. Now I'm gonna take it to position five, just to see if that's not gonna be exactly what we want or maybe too much. So that's gonna be with the bottom of our spacer in the middle hole and the top of our spacer should be in that forward hole. That spacer is going to pop in, get it in position on both sides, and then just like we did when it was in the initial position, we'll just get everything kind of loosely snugged back down. Now we'll raise it back up and try that again. Now that we've got it in the new position, we'll go ahead and load those spring bars back up and check our measurements there. In that position, we're a lot closer, but just a little bit too high now. So we're gonna go from position five to position four, and that should be ideal. We're right back at 25 here at our coupler. Let's check out the front and rear bumper. Now here it looks like we're right there about 22 and a quarter where we started there. So let's check the front bumper. And then there we might still be about an eighth of an inch high, but uh, still really, really close. Now let's get our main head bolts tightened down here. We're gonna to torque these to the specifications we'll find in the instructions. Now that we've seen how it works and how it installs, that's gonna to complete today's look at the Curt True Track Weight Distribution System with Sway Control, part number C17500 on our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.